as someone who sits on the opposite end of the spectrum, right, where I don't at all concern myself with public health, I don't, I'm not trying to make grand observations about what's happening in society across ethnicities or anything like that. I'm, I really just have the luxury of looking at one person at a time and trying to make a determination about the best course of action. Um, you know, my view of BMI is generally quite negative, right? It's that it's the, it's the, maybe the least bad tool available to get massive data sets and make broad assessments of what's happening at the population level. But to your point earlier, at the individual level, it offers very little insight relative to other tools. Um, you know, when we have patients do DEXA scans, uh, I tell them that, you know, we're going to get four important pieces of information out of this. Um, but one of them's really the least important to me, which is your subcutaneous fat. That's the first thing people want to look at when they have a DEXA scan. They want to see what's their percentage of body fat. And I say, but there's three things that are much more important to us, right? One is your visceral fat. Um, one is your bone mineral density, and one is your appendicular lean mass index. So how much muscle mass do you actually have? And we'll look at your subcutaneous fat. Um, but the reality of it is that doesn't really seem to matter because A, that seems to be incredibly genetic, right? Body habitus in that regard, uh, very genetic, uh, and relatively uncoupled from metabolic health. Uh, so the, the VAT, the visceral adipose tissue, seems to be much more tightly correlated to what we see when we look at more sophisticated biomarkers of insulin sensitivity and metabolic health. You know, any evidence of liver fat, all these other things tend to track much more closely with that. So, I mean, I guess m my view on this is that I'm, I'm glad that I get to look at these other metrics because I don't have, I, I have the luxury that a, a statistician or an epidemiologist doesn't have, right? Which is when you do things at the individual level, you have much more data and you can be much more um, nuanced in your appreciation for things. Uh, but I can't help but wonder if at the population level, something better than BMI will come along one day uh, for which there will be enough data to actually do what's out there. And, and again, this example, with the Hispanic subset, that, that's just, that's mind boggling to me. And it, and it really speaks to, I think, the futility of that measurement in other populations. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.